Hello. This is a presentation about RabbitMQ, which is the prominent implementation of AMQP. The legal team have asked me to display the short disclaimer, which you can read in your own time afterwards. Um, I studied computer science and mathematics, and I've followed a career in electronic publishing, but I've been working on Rabbit full-time since 2010. I plan to talk about messaging in general and provide some of the motivations that caused AMQP to come into being and look at a publishing walkthrough demonstrating how AMQP um, can be used to publish a message from a producer to a consumer. And then I'm planning to look at how RabbitMQ makes a unique implementation of MQP and the benefits of using Erlang um, as an implementation language. I've got a couple of examples of large-scale uses of RabbitMQ in the field, which I'd like to share with you at the end, and hopefully if there's enough time, some code samples as well. And then right at the end, the Q&A. So there'll be an opportunity for um, answering questions at the end of the session. So this is the most important slide. This is what we're trying to achieve. We've got a producer and a consumer. And we're trying to send messages from the one to the other. And you might ask a number of questions about this. Who's the consumer? Who's the producer? What are they? What happens if the channel becomes unavailable or becomes interrupted? Um, NKP tries to formulate a model that gives an answer that the producer can be anything. It could be a device, a process, um, some agent on a machine, and the broker would be running um, AMQP broker software. You could see this WebEx as an example of messaging use case. I would be the producer, WebEx would be the broker, and members of the audience would be the consumer of this message. At the end of this session, there's going to be an opportunity for questions. So that's a back channel from the consumer of the message back to the producer. In a standard remote procedure call situation, the message content flowing from the producer to the consumer in the first instance would be a method name and some parameters. And the answer going back would be the result of evaluating a function. Um, so this is another example of a messaging pattern that we want our model to be general enough to be able to express. There's no reason for the, um, for the reply message to go back to the same producer that actually um, sent the original message. So in this case, the reply is going back to some other agent connected to the same broker. And you can see how this could be chained together. Um, the final destination of this message might carry on indefinitely. It might be sent along to yet another agent on the same broker. Yet again, another pattern that we want um, to be able to express this topology. Um, so our model needs to be general enough. Yet another example of a producer, in this case, communicating with more than one consumer. So an example of this would be a, um, a website potentially receiving orders online and having those orders fulfilled on a back end. And the, con the consumers, in this case, would be doing some work based on the reception of that message. And in this case, we've got more than one consumer doing that work, so spreading the load and round robbing round between them. Of course, there's no reason to restrict ourselves to just a single um, producer of work items. We might have more than one web server actually producing um, work items being picked up by a number of consumers on the, um, on the right-hand side. So in all of these cases, we've seen decoupling of producers 
being separated from consumers. And that decoupling can happen in a number of ways. Logical decoupling um, would be an example where the producer and the consumer actually don't know anything about each other, where they share no context whatsoever except for the routing information. So in our WebEx example, I have no idea about any of the people who are receiving this message. All I know about is the URL that I typed in to get to WebEx and the correct time to start the presentation. On your end, you probably don't know anything about me except for the URL that you went to to start this presentation. So that's an example of logical decoupling, where routing joins two sides. Physical decoupling is when the producer and the consumer message are in completely different locations. I'm in London and you might be somewhere in France or in somewhere in Europe because this is the European session. Temporal decoupling, the example of this would be if you listen to this, a recording of this webinar in a couple of weeks' time or from Monday, I believe it will be available. The message was sent today um, on the, uh, the 8th of December and you might be listening to it in some future day. So messaging is to the network what databases is to the file system. And AMQP is to messaging what SQL is to databases. And it's very important to use the correct abstractions here and not to try to express messaging primitives using a database. A symptom of doing this would be overuse of triggers, for example, in databases, or um, making use of a lot of temporary tables, for example, in a database as a means of communication between disparate subsystems. When you're doing that, it's very likely that you create a system which is not scalable, and the better option would be to use messaging instead and use AMQP, in the same way that SQL lets you use databases. So AMQP was designed as a solution or as a um, protocol to solve the problems that, uh, and be able to model the examples, the messaging patterns that we've just looked at. It's an open wire level binary protocol for message-orientated middleware. It's open in that anyone can look at it and anyone is allowed to implement it. It's so open, in fact, that nobody is going to stop you if you um, don't implement it correctly. But the wire level um, codec is specified in an XML file, which makes it very easy to implement a correct framing implementation, at least. Um, so it was originally designed by J.P. Morgan and other members of the working group to send um, very low latency trading messages. So the wire level protocol is extremely um, uh, efficient. There's very little um, fat in the protocol. It was created by real users and technologists trying to solve a real problem. This is not an academic exercise. It's a, a very pragmatic solution to a real problem. And it's intended to be straightforward and complete in the same way that SMTP is straightforward and complete. It's meant to be used at different scales, and at, at very, very small scales on devices and very memory constrained environments up to web scale, cloud scale technologies that span the globe. If we look at the model from the side on, right at the bottom, the transport layer is network friendly. It runs over TCP IP, and it uses a single port to make it easy to configure firewalls. The framing is network optimized, so it's very, very small packets. The overhead is extremely small. The wire format is defined in an XML file to ease interoperability. And the routing on top of that decides where messages go. As an example of the, um, the XML specification that defines what the framing protocol looks like, this is what the published message looks like. 
and I'll be taking a look at what the Erlang implementation of this translates to using our mechanical translation process. If we look at the model from the top down, the path that messages travel from producers to consumers, they would first meet with exchangers. So in this diagram, everything in the box is the MQP broker. Producers' messages first go to exchangers, and exchangers don't have any kind of state at all. All they do is shuffle messages around, send them to the correct queue, potentially duplicating them, but at no point is the message actually observable at the exchange. The next up is the bindings. Queues are related to exchanges via a binding. Queues themselves have very little logic in them. All they do is buffer up messages until consumers choose to pick them off the queue. So in this diagram, all the lines, all the arrows crossing the box are MQP. So the protocol spoken between the consumer and the queue is MQP, and the protocol spoken between the producer and the exchange is MQP. The lines connecting the exchanges and the queues are bindings. Um, and this model is general enough to be able to express all of the patterns that we've looked at before. I'm going to go into a little bit of more detail about different kinds of exchanges that you get, different kind of routing topologies that you can express with bindings. 